Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, career mode with me, Redneck Einstein. Today we're gonna do a few pieces of admin, shall we say. If you take a little look up here on our Kerbal Alarm Clock, we've got a number of maneuvers that are coming up that we need to do. One is our Gilly Unmanned Lander, the next is our Eve Unmanned Lander, and we also need to take control of the Drez Manned Mark 1 rocket, which contains the legendary Jebediah, so we need to work on bringing him back also. But the first part of this episode is going to cover our journey towards Sarnus. Now, if you haven't heard of Sarnus, I'll uh, explain exactly what that is. Now, there's a mod called Outer Planets mod, which gives you more planets and makes things kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of new planets. Let me just zoom out on the uh, galaxy here, on the solar system. And I'll show you what I mean. So we've got our regular planets. We've got Moho, Eve, Kerbin, Duna, Drez, and Jewel. But further out, you can see up here is Sarnus. And even further out is Erlum, Nadon, and Plock. Now, if we focus on Sarnus for a minute and zoom in there, we can now see what has happened to Elu. So Elu is actually now a moon of Sarnus. And Sarnus looks kind of cool. Looks like Saturn almost, and that's even got uh, a couple of much closer little moons, Hale and Ovok. Now, we're going to be exploring them in due course. I'm hoping I've got enough Delta V on this rocket to explore most, if not all, of this. We'll at least take a look anyway, so we've got Tecto and Slate also. Um, yeah, so let's go back to our launch phase. Now, for this, we've got one big-ass rocket. This rocket has uh, about... Nearly 14,000 Delta V. Um, you can't see it here because we're in the atmosphere. But once it's up in uh, outer space, it's got about 14,000 Delta V. So, so if we return to the VAB just temporarily so I can show you exactly what kind of hardware we're taking out to the Sarnus system, uh, we'll start at the very top. There's not too much to show you, really. We've just got the Mystery Goo container, the Science Junior, the radar altimetry sensor, the multispectral sensor that we've seen before, and the press map barometer, and also the thermometer. Now, I'm kind of tempted to take the seismic accelerometer, but obviously we're not going to really be able to use that unless we land. So I guess we'll leave it as it is. Now, in terms of our fairing, we need to make sure clamshell deploy is on, because that just looks awesome. And then the next stage has got a number of photovoltaic panels, the liquid fuel fuselage, and the atomic rocket motor. So, let's go back to the launch phase, and I'll show you how this thing flies. It's actually not too bad. Uh, transitioning between maneuvers is sometimes a little bit challenging, because it's not very responsive, even though it does have um, a command... Uh, part which is underneath the fairings i'm not 100 percent sure why it isn't that easy but eventually we get into the direction we need to go for our maneuvers so it's not really a problem um the other thing to be aware of is yeah you can see a hell of a lot of struts on this space tape for the win uh the reason for that is because i tried it with a little bit less and it just becomes unstable it's generally these um atomic rocket motors that are the problem because they're so long, they uh, introduce a lot of instability and wiggly-woggliness, as I've referred to it in previous videos. <laughs> and that's essentially... Uh, I guess it's because of the amount of force that's being generated by these mainsail liquid fuel engines pushing behind it. And it's almost creating like a concertina effect, where it's just the force is too great and it it almost makes the thing buckle. It's, like, it's a bit like a spring, really. If you push a spring... You can eventually get it to go, uh, you know, forward, but it will buckle and protest at being pushed from behind. So that's essentially the problem we're dealing with. The other thing is you've got to be a little bit careful with how quickly you turn to the right here and how early because it has a tendency to flip out of control. And obviously we don't want it to flip out of control because that would mean... Reinstein has failed and we'll lose a lot of Delta V anyway. So if you take a little look over on the right, our flight engineer is reporting back that we have just under 12,000 Delta V currently, which is what we want to see. And uh, here we go. So the fairings on this thing adds a great deal of aerodynamicness, 
aerodynamism, aerodynamicness, don't know how you say that. Uh, so the rocket flies through the atmosphere with the greatest of ease. Um, it is quite an expensive rocket and one perhaps we're taking a little, make you know, it's a little bit of a luxury in the sense that we haven't actually got a contract to fly to Sarnus, but it's only 29 days away, the transfer window, and I thought, well, I don't want to miss this opportunity. Who knows when that thing will come back around, simply because it's so far out. Um, I've talked before about how f long it takes to get to some of these outer planets. I think Plock, the furthest out, takes about 30 years. Um, and Sarnus itself, once we've created our maneuver to get there, actually takes, I think, just over five years to, to travel there, which, you know, is quite a long time. So we won't be watching all of it. We'll uh, be leaving it parked in perhaps parked in orbit, I'm not sure yet, or either that or we'll uh, do the whole maneuver and then just leave it on its merry way, uh, we'll see. Okay, so we're just escaping Kerbal Atmosphere, getting into our orbit here, it was pushed out really quite far, but at least the rocket hasn't flipped over, so I'm quite happy about that. Set our uh, maneuver at the apoapsis, just as before, wait for the apoapsis and periapsis to spin round, and then we know we're in the right position. Now, this is what I was referring to when I tried when I was saying that it's hard to control. Like I'm pressing D, so I want it to go right as hard as I can, but it's barely even moving. And the trick I found here is just to speed up the physics engine by pressing the Alt key and the period key. So if I speed that up to times four, you can see we can actually move it a lot quicker, and uh, we can we can get to our maneuver node. So it's 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 fine in some senses a little bit frustrating in others so let's get to a node in T of about seven seconds uh, we can see we've got 2066 meters per second Delta V left on this stage which is good all right let's burn there and take a little look at how Kerbin looks below us are there any mods that make Kerbin look better I've seen some people using them but I don't know what they're actually called so if anyone could uh, inform me via the comment section that would be fantastic that's good enough there's our circularization around Kerbin now we want to escape Kerbin and get into our solar orbit so what I'm going to do is burn about here so that it will push us that way and we'll fly around the sun in the direction Kerbin's already traveling so let's just push that out. Escape Kerbin, the moon and Mimus's gravity. Again, use the alt period or full stop uh, trick and try and maneuver this beast the right direction. Okie dokie. So another 878.8 delta V is required here. Let's just slow that down and we can start our journey around Kerbin. We fly, you beast! I bet Jim and I would love to be in charge of this rocket. All right, that's good enough. Let's start our burn. Ready and fire! Yeah. Yes. So we're going to be propelling that way, and we need to create a couple of maneuver nodes. Um, Sarnus is on a slight inclination. I can't remember the exact angle, but uh, we'll have a look in a few. Maybe we can see it here. Maybe we can't. I haven't got the patience for that. <laughs> okay. So, off we go. Now, don't forget, guys, if any of you want to support me on Patreon, please feel free. I will be moving back to England very soon because I can't afford to keep the channel going uh, with just working on the channel and not having a job. So I need to go back and get a job. And Sweden's not being very kind and won't provide me with any job, any pretty much anything, even though I've tried learning the language. Uh, yeah, they're they're... Not very helpful. European Union, my ass. Right, so 17 days is when our maneuver should be carried out, or our transfer window to Sarnus is. So, let us... If we go... Hold on, let's first set Sarnus as our target. There we go. And now take a little look at the ascending node and descending node that have popped up. They show us that we're about 2 degrees out. Now, if I try and find where on our trajectory 17 days is so it's about about there we can add a maneuver there and that will actually take us 
Tucsonus approximately, uh, apart from the angle of inclination change. So let's drag that out. This shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, there we go. So roughly we're in touch with it already. Then we can set another maneuver after this burn at the ascending node and change our angle of inclination. So we want to get that to as close to zero as possible. And I think we have achieved our objective there. But on this trajectory, I'm not happy because we're going to be uh, flying out past Sarnus and then dipping back in. Uh, I think that will speed us up. So I'm going to try and drag our orbit back in here like so. There we go. We've got an encounter there. Brilliant. As you can see, like I said, it's five years, 229 days in the future. And we need a Delta V already of 3014 leaving us with approximately 5900 delta v left if my math's correct uh, which should be enough to explore a nice little chunk of the sauna system now again use my little trick here to uh, do the maneuver and i don't think you need to see this entire maneuver guys so i'm going to leave this part here i'll carry out the maneuver don't worry uh, and I'll show you some of these other maneuvers that we've got to carry out too. See you in a second. Alrighty, welcome back guys. You can uh, take a little look here. We've now completed the first part of my burn. Uh, I have a little bit of an issue though. I, I was assuming that I could do this uh, maneuver next, which, but it's in 40 days. Um, and obviously we can't. The reason being because we've got our Gilly Unmanned Lander. Um, uh, maneuver to perform. So where is our Gilly Unmanned Lander and what does he do? Um, let's go back and find him I guess. Ship. Ah, is it down here? It must be on its trajectory around here somewhere. There it is, Gilly Unmanned Lander. So if we switch to that now, we will position ourselves ready. So you can see the, the rocket design is actually very very similar. Um, the maneuver seems to have been reset. I wonder if that's because of the update. The game changed from 1.1.2 uh, 1 to 1.1.3. Now I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. Ah, uh, yes. We need to fly. Fly faster. Oh, wait a minute. We need to set a alarm for our previous rocket as well. Nonetheless, let's fly with the Gilly Unmanned Lander to the periapsis around uh, Eve. And we'll actually get rid of that alarm now. So, where are we? Right, there's our maneuver. And hopefully it's not going to keep disappearing on the nav ball down here. Should be about here somewhere, but it's refusing to play ball. So we'll just, I guess we can just set another one. <laughs> it's a bit of a nuisance. There we go. So that will take us around Eve. Good, good, good. So yeah, then we're going to need to change our angle of inclination. All right, so we can see that this is going to take 599.7 delta V, uh, which is quite a lot. Hang on a minute. What's going on? Is this not activated? I'm trying to see what my estimated burn is, but it's not telling me. We'll have to take a guess. Uh, what do you think? About two minutes with this uh, little poodle engine? Yeah, we'll go for that. All right, there we go. Wow, no, it was only 25 seconds. Nonetheless, this will give us an orbit. Now, I kind of want to do our little uh, deploying of the Airstream Protective Shell here. Look at that clamshell design in action. Beautiful. Sweet. All right, let's take a little look at what our orbit is doing here. We've run out of fuel on this stage. Trying to jetson that and wave bye-bye. See you later, alligator. We're off. Come on now. Get around, Gilly. Oh, yeah, the Eve Unmanned Lander is actually going to land on Eve, isn't it? I forgot about that. All right, we'll leave the Gilly rocket in orbit here. If we can. And set it as our target. And now, once again, that brings up the ascending and descending node uh, angle or, or numbers. 
yeah, angle. And we can see that we are well out. We need to change this inclination to as close to zero as possible, as per usual. But currently it's at like 20. Wow. All right, 0 0.3 minus 0 0.2. So if we just make that zero, lovely, jubbly. Not too big of a delta V change. I suspect uh, if we had to change our angle of inclination. Oh, wow. That's not for 50 days, this maneuver. <laughs> if we had to change our angle of inclination around Eve, I think that would be uh, a much bigger value. Um, okay, let's add that alarm for 50 days. It's really hard to keep track of all these different missions, to be fair. Uh, so then Eve... All right, let's zoom out and see where our Sarnus rocket is. There it is. So, yeah, we need to switch to that. Um, set our new maneuver node, which is in 12 days now. So, we'll add that. Yeah, so we might as well fast forward to that point. Let's see what's going on here. Let's take a little look at the solar system. So, yeah, we're going round there. Alright, and my rocket's refusing to move. Again. Okay, so I think we're on the Poodle uh, rocket here. Let me just take a look. Yeah, we are. Alright, good. So that gives us an indication of how long uh, 279 Delta V will take to burn. Last just now it was over 500 and that took about 25 seconds. So this should only take about 12 seconds approximately. Um, yeah, so time automatically slows down once you get to your maneuver nose. So if we just leave that fast forwarding, it will do it almost perfectly for me. I think it stops at a minute, if I'm not mistaken, which uh, gives us a little margin for error. There we go, yeah, it's counting right down. So I'm just gonna get rid of that now. Ooh, don't set any of those as targets. <gasps> oh, we go, overshot it, damn it. How did I fail that? Rhiney, you big numb skull. Hey, we actually have an encounter. Sarnus encounter. I've done it already. Not perfect, but we have an encounter. And as you can see, that is in five years. 288 days and then we'll reach our periapsis 12 61 days later jesus christ that's a long time um okay i think that's enough for one episode next episode we'll have to take care of um eve and gilly again and perhaps we'll even fast forward to the point where uh, we get control of jebediah again and where is he anyway on this little journey there's our solar orbital research unit Jebediah. There he is. Let's go and check in on him. See if he's still alive. <laughs> he ought to be, but you never know with this game. Sometimes it's got little bugs. Yeah, Jeb's still alive. Victory dance. Are you alright there, mate? Yes, I'm fine. Give me a crew report then. I've got nothing to report, sir. Alright then. Alright, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please click the like button. Share the video with all your friends. Send me your thoughts and comments. And have a wonderful day. Rundstein is out of here. Yeehaw!